Sweet the lick. You have a problem with that? No sensei. No mercy. That's two points, LaRusso. Lawrence, nothing. Great. Sweep the leg. Hey everybody, it's Jason Robinson, Illustration by Design. It is, uh, let's see, it's 10 o'clock right now. I'm starting extremely late. I planned to start earlier, but I was busy most of the day, so I haven't had time to, uh, to stream or to, uh, or to complete my drawing from yesterday, which was this one, Johnny from uh, Cobra Kai, but I will finish him later. I actually had to erase <laughs> half his head and, uh, and redraw it, or at least uh, lay it out, because I realized afterwards that I had actually miscalculated his, uh, his proportions. And it was killing me, and I was like, ah, I just gotta, I gotta start from, not start from scratch, but like from his eyes down 
I had to erase. So I was like, ah, dang it. But it's all part of the process, all part of the learning. How you doing? Good seeing you. Um, yeah, in case you, this is your first time here, my name is Jason Robinson. I'm an illustrator, a graphic artist, and uh, I try to do these sketch a day things every other day um, in order to try to keep my skills honed and try to improve them actually because I got a lot of learning to do. But uh, yeah, that was a little clip from Cobra, no, actually, Karate Kid uh, with uh, John Kreese, the, uh, the, very enthusiastic sensei of Johnny Lawrence. And uh, I also showed a little trailer for Secret Comics Presents, a horror anthology comic book that I drew several months back. And it's still available. If you guys want a copy of it, you can buy it down below. Just click the link down below. Or you can also click the link that I think is pinned to the top of the chat, I believe, or it's at the top of the chat. Um, I'm not sure if I pinned it or not. I can't remember. Eric Hawkins is here. He says, sweep the leg. Yes, that is what you must do to beat Daniel LaRusso. Sweep the leg. So, let's see. There you go. Now I've pinned the link to Secret Comics Presents to the top of the chat for all you guys to look at. Let's see here. Um, ah, Drone and Quarter is happening right now. I was afraid of that, but unfortunately, not much I can do about it. Um, but let me get to my channel and see if anybody's here there are two people here which is cool that's awesome uh and i will start drawing i am on the last legs of my Streamyard free service i have like 30 minutes left but luckily i can stretch that out as long as i want as long as i don't go offline so hopefully my internet will cooperate today and it will not kill the stream so i'll be able to continue drawing John Kreese, until I'm pretty much done, I'm hoping I will get mostly done in the next uh, few hours. So, sit back, hang out, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy watching me try to get John Kreese sorted out. Let's see, did I remember to, yes I did, yeah, I remember to turn the mute off this time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let me just, guess, I guess, get started. Oh, let me turn my fan on. Because it's humid in here. It's cool, uh, you know, outside, but for some reason, I live in Florida, so it's, even though it's cool, it's still humid, so I need the fan on to keep my hands from getting sticky. I need some air circulation in here. So, with that said, I will turn on my silly music. And, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll be here. And, uh, yeah. You see what blue rage you made on your weekend automatic events? More than half of you failed. Now, let's see. John Kreese. He's actually one of the better movie villains out there. I guess TV villains, too. Pencils there. Put reference there. And uh,
Now, Martin Cove, who plays uh, John Kreese, he has a really good face. He has a great, it's good for caricatures, and it's also just good for drawing in general. He has a lot of, he has a lot of character to his face, so he is, uh, he's fun to draw. This is my first time drawing him, but I can tell already that it's like, it's going much, <laughs> much easier than, uh, than usual. I think it's just because he has a he has really cool, interesting features. Let's see. I gotta increase the brightness on my cell phone. I can't see anything. Thank you. 
Hey, we got our first Russian bot of the evening. Hello. Thank you. 
Okay, got the I got the basics for space down. Hey Jeff Potts, how you doing? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing well. Got the basics for Crease's face down. Now I just have to focus on the details. Ah, trying to get those down. Oof. All right, there we go. Turn it to the side a little. It's hard to see. I was watching some more clips from Cobra Kai last week, and um, I saw that they had like a flashback of uh, of Kreese's, uh life, you know, when he was back in the army, I guess during uh, Vietnam, and uh, they had this this guy playing, you know, Crease as a young man, and then I saw after that <laughs> someone had done a deep fake replacing that actor's face with. Martin Cove's face, the guy who actually plays John Kreese on the t on uh, in the movies and 
on Cobra Kai. It was so good. I was I wondered it's like why didn't they just do that in the first place? Why didn't they just deep fake Martin Cove's face onto another actor's body, you know, to play himself as a young man? It would have it would have been I don't know. So much better. <laughs> it would have been so cool if they'd done that, but yeah, you know, for whatever reason they didn't. So which is a shame. But if you have a chance, uh, you know, type in, I guess uh, John Kreese deep fake um, and it should show that scene I mean it showed all the scenes of him as a as a kid you know with Martin Coe's face and it was really good I was very very impressed by it it's like ah oh, that is really good because whenever I see flashbacks I always want to believe that it's, it's actually the character as, as, you know, as, as you know, when he's younger, um, but it definitely helps when that actor's face is actually on <laughs> on that you know on that younger version of him. Hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, stand up. Take a look at this. Oh, wow. Three people are here. Hello, three people. Thank you for joining my live stream as I draw John Kreese from Cobra Kai. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications of future videos, and hit the like button if you would.
Thanks, Jeff Potts. Oh, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. I would never have known if you guys had not said something. So I appreciate your uh, your diligence and uh, give me a heads up. Now, I'm drawing this, and I'm, like, worried because I'm, well, it, it always happens. It's like I, I I think I have it right, and then I start looking at it again. I see stuff that's off, so I just have to go back and start trimming, start sculpting away with my uh, with my pencil. Moving the bits that don't belong. Right now his nose is bothering me because it's, I've made it made it too big. Stop it. Uh, Rimmery says, um, Darcy, Jason is the artist of black screen. Yes, yes. You can usually count on my streams dropping out at least once per, uh, per session. I don't know why, though, because it's not like I'm, I'm not using Wi-Fi to stream. I'm using, it's, it's hardwired to, uh, to the Internet through Ethernet, so I don't know. Why it keeps dropping like that, but uh, not much I can do about it other than correct it when it happens. I think this will have to do in terms of the proportions. It's pretty much there. I'm not going to nitpick forever over it. <laughs> I got myself crazy. Crazier. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll just have to. It'll just have to bother me.
Some more adjusting. Some more adjusting. Thank you. 
Hey, P Money, how you doing? How's the weather up in your neck of the woods? Is it like blizzard conditions? Is it normal for uh, this time of year? I think they're having a snowstorm up in the uh, northern United States on the East Coast, so I didn't know. If that affected you or not. It's weird because John Kreese sort of looks like uh, <laughs> one of my oldest friends. A guy I've known since, uh, since I was eight. He has the same kind of... He looks like him. <laughs> Except... Uh, my, my, my friend isn't an evil karate uh, sensei. Although he might be, and I just don't know about it. He does live in California, so it's possible that my friend is the real John Kreese. I'm just unaware of it. Why is, is there something? Oh man, I can't. this is this is a problem with uh, with drawing. It's like, whoa, are you serious? Is it negative forty degree weather? Are you are you joking? The problem with drawing is that it's not. Mm, every time I look. I look at it and I think it's fine, and then I look again, and then I realize that it's off. Oh my god, it's killing me. Sorry. This is the entertainment part of the stream. Me erasing all my work, and then, uh, then redoing it. Shoot. Dang it. Bye bye. Bye bye, eyes. Ah. Uh. Frustrating, frustrating. I should call my channel the joy of drawing. Um, P. Money says, yes, I'm serious. The best thing about it, negative 40 is, about negative 40 is I can say the temperature and it's the same in Fahrenheit and Celsius. <laughs> Have you done that trick where you take boiling water and throw it outside yet, P. Money, and it turns into snow instantly? I've never done it, but I've seen it on YouTube. It looks like fun. It looks like fun, though I've never done it myself. It doesn't quite work in South Florida, but... Now, I gotta, I gotta redraw the eyes and try to get them right. Okay, that looks okay. Hmm. Let's try. Let's give it a shot.
Know how to stand outside to the, to the snow. Nah. You have to read this again. Deck it. Stop that. Um. He might says, no, I have to stand outside to the snow boiling water thing. No, thank you. Oh, okay, you don't want to do it. Okay. Hey, Jeff Fox got 13 views on Rumble today. Cool. Bruce says, this time P Money is telling the truth. Ah, okay, cool. Well, if Ruth, if Ruth vouches for you, then I, then it must be true. All right, let's see if I can get this eye working. Looks good. I'm gonna pull this in. Ruth is here to speak on P Money's behalf. She says, I can vouch for him. I walked home from work. What? A three minute walk. My eyes almost froze shut. Dang. Dang. Ouch. Yeah, we don't have that problem where I live. We walk three minutes outside here, and, uh, yeah. Probably get a sunburn. <laughs> sort of the exact opposite problem. Although right now it's it's, it's nice. You'd say. What time? It's, it's about it's about seventy. Yeah, it's about low seventies right now. Down here, so it's good. But I would wish it would snow. Whereas I'm sure you guys feel the exact opposite. <laughs> Grass is always greener. He might says, I keep turning on the car from time to time, just making sure it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's one of the fun parts of uh, living where it's cold, you know, dealing with your car. I've never had to drive in, in, uh, in snowy or icy weather, thank goodness. That's the one thing I would uh, I'd be worried about living up north. Mike says, on plus side, we've never experienced a hurricane, so we got that going for us. Yeah, hurricanes aren't that bad. I mean, it, I mean, at least where I live, in South Florida, you know, a major hurricane hits here maybe once every. Uh, what's the last time it happened? I mean, it actually hit here. 
is probably 15 years ago. So it's like once, maybe once a decade, once every two decades, maybe. And even then, unless you're like right on the coast, you generally don't have to worry too much about it. I mean, I, I'm pretty close to the coast. I'm like, uh, I'm probably... I'll say 10 minutes from the beach driving, maybe, maybe five minutes, depending on traffic. And I've never had to worry about a hurricane because when you're, when you're that far inland, it's the, the destruction. Again, I'm, I'm talking about in South Florida where I live. It's not, I've never We've had tree branches fall, or we've had trees fall down. Um, you know, we've never had like buildings blown away or destroyed or any, anything like that. Um, I mean, I know it's happened, you know, um, in other places in, in uh, yeah, in the country. But and you know, I think the last really terrible hurricane we had in South Florida was Hurricane Andrew, and that was when I was in college. That was in ninety. 1990, 1991, that's 30 years ago. So you, you don't have to worry about hurricanes in South Florida. But fortunately, nine times out of 10, or probably more than that, I'd say, I don't know, 19 times out of 20, the hurricane will skirt around Florida and head either up the Gulf Coast and hit, hitting uh, the New Orleans area or skirt up the East Coast and and go towards the Carolinas. So I would much rather live in South Florida than uh, the Carolinas or um, or the the Gulf, like uh, the Gulf Basin, where uh, New Orleans is. I mean, I, I would hate to live in New Orleans. One, one, it's low sea level, so it's sort of it's basically a an empty fishbowl just waiting for water to pour in and two it gets most of the hurricanes that head towards america they go it's like a it's like a hurricane magnet so i would i would, I would never want to live there uh he might says are gators an issue where you live uh it's one reason i don't want to live too far south of florida um well gators are a problem all over all over florida doesn't matter where you live um and we have gators down here but um, they're not not really an issue. I mean, you have you have to watch out for them if you live if you live near a canal, which I do. I live right next to a canal. Um, so when you're walking, you just have to keep your eye out to make sure that there isn't a gator maybe sleeping on the grass and you're not paying attention. You you do have to do that. You do if you have if you have small dogs, don't let them run around. <laughs> because there's a there's a fairly good chance a gator might snack on it. Where my wife works, there's a there's a lake out back. There are alligators there. Um, where my dad used to work, he used to work for IBM. Um, there are alligators in the in the lakes and ponds there. Anywhere there's a body of water, um, there's a good chance you're going to find alligators uh, because South Florida. I mean. Oh, all South Florida was basically swampland at one point. We've just built over a large portion of it, and if, when you have the east, you have okay, you have the east coast of Florida. Say this is Florida. East coast is here. West coast is here. Here's the ocean. South Florida. When I say South Florida, South Florida is only the edge of Florida here. This is the part that's built up. Outside of here, west of here, from, from here to here, this is built up. This is built up in Florida. The middle, the majority of the middle isn't built up. It's still Everglades. So all this area here of, of South Florida is, uh, is still gator, you know, snake, you know, whatever country. So all the animals in here scurry all along out here so any golf course any whatever will have alligators what have you so you know you just have to be careful keep your eye open 
Um, P Money says, my wife is now having a debate with me. She says, Canadian moose are more dangerous than alligators. I disagree with her. Well, I've never had to, um, I, I might agree with her because gators generally don't bother people. <laughs> so, um, you know, Canadian moose, you have to worry, I imagine you have to worry about them when you're driving on the roads, um, when you're walking in the woods or whatever. I mean, you don't have to, uh, you know, if you're driving, you, you have nothing to worry about from alligators. Alligators aren't going to be on the roads. Eh, they, they might be, but I've never, I mean, I've lived down here for, for over 40 years. I've never seen an alligator on the road. Um, and, uh, you don't have to worry about alligators jumping out of the brush, you know, in front of your car. You know, I would, I would imagine Canadian moose are much more dangerous than, than gators generally. <laughs> Jeff Potts said, flip that hand around and stick out your thumb and you're in my state. What states over here on Florida <laughs> or over here? I don't, I don't know. There are less moose around you than there are alligators around, Jason. Well, in South Florida, yes, <laughs> there, there are no moose down here. So, um, but in general, I, I, I kind of think you would have to fear more from moose. I don't know. You know, if an alligator gets a hold of you, you're in trouble. Um, but you can, you can outrun an alligator. I, I don't think you can outrun a moose if it's, if it's coming after you. <laughs> um, P. Mike says, point taken. I once slammed on my brakes to not hit a moose. Oh, the magic, is that what they call Michigan? The magic mitten? <laughs> I ne I'd never heard that before. That's, that's hilarious. Why do they call it the magic mitten? I don't, I don't, is that advice? Is it shaped like a, like a, like a glove, like a mitten? I, I admit, I've, I've never really taken much time to, to look at, um, the shape of Michigan, so. All right, let me fix this. Alligators are ambush predators. <sighs> yeah, meh. I, I guess, but I mean, you never, eh, not you have to be in, they, they're only ambush predators if you're in, if you're in the, um, if you're in the Everglades, because like I said, in South Florida, it's all built up. I mean, everything is, has been paved over. There's, there's no place for alligators to hide. They're not hiding behind, you know, buildings or anything. Um, so they're not really, they can't really ambush you. Uh, again, unless you're just not paying attention, um, and you're and you're by a canal, and you you're on your cell phone, or you're just I don't know whatever, completely unaware of this, you know, sort of monstrous reptile lying on the grass next to your feet. I I, I'm, um, you, I mean, you I'm trying to think you I. I'm trying to think of anyone I've ever heard of getting killed by an alligator in South Florida. I'm sure it's happened, but I mean, the, the last time I've heard of a person getting killed by an alligator was at Disney World, maybe about 10 years ago. And it was a kid and and the kid went in one of one of Disney's. Uh, what was it? it was one it's one of their one of their parks, one of the theme parks. And it was like a beach and people were allowed to swim in it. And a kid, a little kid, jumped in there like a three-year-old, and there were, there was alligators in the, in the water because if you have a body of water in, in Florida, an alligator will find it, and then boom. Um, Jeff Potts says uh, golf courses. I play golf. Yeah, but a golf course is is this pure open land. It, it's not how it, alligators have no place to hide. You, you you can see an alligator half a mile away on a golf course <laughs> because it's just it's like you know it, it stands out like a sore thumb it, it, alligators can't really ambush you on a golf course unless it's hiding in the water and uh again i've never heard of anyone getting eaten by an alligator on a golf course in south florida 
Um, maybe it's happened, but I've never heard of it. But but you will see alligators on golf courses a, a fair amount in, in South Florida. I mean, they you know because they're playing in water traps all over golf courses, and alligators love water, so you'll find them there. Sometimes they're monstrous, which is pretty cool. It's always cool to see like a giant dinosaur-sized alligator. It's better. I think it's better. I used to play a lot in Myrtle Beach. Um, Jeff Pye says they hide in the water hazards. Yeah, yeah, but again, you're not. I, I've never heard of anyone being eaten by an alligator. On a golf course, rather. Let me, let's see here. Give me a second. I'll be right back. to get something to drink and I had a choice between Mike's Hard Lemonade or Gatorade. So I decided that I've, I've messed this drawing up enough, so I, I chose the Gatorade. <laughs> I did not need a, I'm not hardcore enough to be able to, uh, to drink malt liquor without screwing up malt liquor.
Hmm. Ah. I was actually surprised because I went to I went shopping yesterday at the grocery store for the past month and a half, two months. The Gatorade section has been empty, and then I went yesterday, and there was actually Gatorade on the shelves. I was like, "Oh yay, Gatorade!" So I grabbed one before they were all gone again. All right, this is gonna have to do. Never gonna be. 100% happy, but let's see. Yeah, I've, I've tried to play golf before. Um, I played it, I, th I think, twice. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's just, it's just, for well, one, it's very hard. Um, you know, I don't have the hand-eye coordination to, to hit the ball. And uh, also, it's just, I kind of find it boring. Um, and that's probably linked to the fact that I can't play. So, <laughs> the fact that I can't hit the ball and me thinking that's boring are probably linked. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've gone twice to play golf, and it's just, yeah. But, you know, I know some people who love it. My sister and her husband like playing. I mean, just never, never interested me. It's just, you know, spending all day out in the sun, walking around, hitting a ball, you know, for 18 holes. It's, and it's expensive. It's, it's, it's an expensive sport that, like, takes up your entire day. And I'm like, eh, that's all right. I'd rather stay home and read comics. <laughs> I'd rather, I rather spend, I rather spend all day at Barnes and Noble in in the comic and manga section than, uh, you know, being out in the sun sweating, <laughs> trying to hit a ball to a hole. If I'm gonna do that, I'd rather be inside like playing pool or something. Yes, this is better. I think. I think it's better. It's still messed up, but, you know. I will... This ain't no piano. I have to keep telling myself, this is not the Mona Lisa. This is just... This is just John Kreese. I mean, he, he, he he's, he's almost as important as the Mona Lisa, but... I have to let it go. I just have to... <clears throat> I keep forgetting to tell you, Jason, are you from Jacksonville? Oh, you, you keep forgetting to ask me. <laughs> um, no, I'm not from Jacksonville. I've, I've been there once. I went there for the first time two years ago um, for Valentine's Day, <clears throat> right after COVID hit. And guess what? I think we got COVID because uh, my wife was sick on the drive up there. And by the time we got there, I was sick. And we spent the entire five days we were up there sick as dogs in our hotel room. And then uh, and then I was stuck with a nasty lingering cough for the for the entire month after that. So Jacksonville was not a, a great experience <laughs> when we went to visit. Um, but I, I, I've been there. I went like I said, I went there once. Um, and what struck me was uh, all the homeless people. I mean, there are a lot of homeless people in Jacksonville, at least more than I'm used to. Um, you know, in South Florida, where I live, it's like I, you know, you see people on the corner, you know, on on intersections, like you know, panhandling, but you you don't see people on the sidewalk, just, you know, just sort of destitute, just lined up. You don't see like groups of people lined up living on the sidewalk. Um, down here, and uh, you know, I saw that in, in Jacksonville. I was I was a little shocked, just like what the what's going on here. 
I don't know if it's a, if it's a mayor or, or, or what, but for some reason they just they just let you know homeless people just living up just live on the streets there. Um, P. Money says, uh, that's funny. Two of my, oops, hold on. I'm getting, get my cord all tangled up here. Let's see if I can fix this without unplugging it. Okay, there we go. Um, P. Money says, that's funny. Two, dang, damn it, phone. Uh, two of my parents' favorite hotels in Florida are Jacksonville and Orlando Red Roof Inns. We didn't stay at, we didn't stay at the Red Roof Inn. Maybe maybe we should have. <laughs> but uh but it would have mattered because uh we yeah we were we were sick anyway. Um Yeah, you know, that might be they might be good hotels. I have no idea. I've never actually been. There are plenty of good hotels in, in the area. Let's give it a shot. My parents will only stay at Red Roof Inns in America. I don't know why. They're probably good hotels. I mean, I, I imagine. <laughs> when we were, um, when we first started, well, even, yeah, when we first started visiting Florida, like back in the seventies, my parents would always stay at Days Inn. Um, I imagine it's because they were decent hotels, but it may have also been because they were they were so frequent. I mean, they were so common back then that. They're very easy to find. So, um, but you know, maybe red roof ins are just very, very good. I don't know. I've never been to one. I cannot. Ah, shoot. All right. Uh, okay, let me. I will adjust. I will adjust. <laughs> so I'm talking to myself. Usually when I talk to myself, there are, there aren't there aren't people listening in to hear how crazy I am. So my apologies. Hmm. Let's see 
second. What am I doing here? I'm looking at this reference and uh, mm. uh, hmm. Hmm. Is that okay, man? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My wife says she feels the same way when she does her TikTok stream. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's like I, I, I really I, I really enjoy watching live streams and YouTube videos, and I kind of don't like making them. <laughs> Just because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very self-conscious. So. I don't like messing up in front of other people. I'd rather just, I just want them this, I just want them to see the wonderful finished product and not all the, uh, all the aggravation I go through. <laughs> to get there. It's like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Just look at my beautiful artwork when it's finished. Don't look at all my mistakes. <laughs> all right. Let's see. I'm ready to go. 
Interesting, interesting.
four people are watching. Very cool. Thank you very much, everybody. Your viewership is much appreciated. Keeps me from feeling so lonely. <laughs> Drawing in the dark. <laughs> Late at night. And somebody leaves. <laughs> Why? Why? Is the hair.
there's something off. There's something off. I'm like working on this, and I'm like, <laughs> why does this guy look like Wolverine? <laughs> like there's something. Maybe his forehead's too low. I don't know. Just gotta keep playing with it. Egg nabbit. I gotta quit fumbling with my tools. off. Let me stand up. Let me stand up. Uh. We are now at the two hour mark. So I'm going to keep working on it. See if I can Tighten it up a little more. I think it's these cheek shadows that are throwing me off. Yeah. Yeah, it's the shadows that are messing with my messing with my eyes
up with this uh, part here. Why is this not working? Rain asked, is this, is this gypsy music? I don't think so. No, this is electro swing. Maybe gypsies listen to it. I don't know. Uh, Ray says, are you doing another comic? Not right now, no. I am not. Will I do one in the future? Possibly. I don't know when, though.
All right. Let me start. Laying down, laying down some blacks. My chair will move. Dag nab it. Worst thing about this new chair of mine is that the casters don't seem to move. Well, they move, but they don't move well, so. Hmm. Do you want to work with Nasser again? 
asked Rain. Let me think about that. <laughs> um, sure, I'll work with Nasser again. Nasser is a pain. He can be annoying, obnoxious, and a jerk. But he is... Inside, he's a good person. He just he just allows his desire to uh, well, how should I put this? His uh, he lets his ambition overrule his common sense sometimes, and uh, you know makes him say and do things that he probably should not do do and say. He delivers books on time, and he pays. And he keeps his promises. So, those are three factors that are essential if I'm going to be working with someone. <laughs> you have to put out your book on time. You have to keep your promises, and you have to be able to pay. Oh, I mean, generally. I mean, he didn't pay a lot, but you know, if we came to an agreement. He kept his end of the bargain, and uh, he, actually, he actually delivered more than he promised, so it was very, uh, yeah, very amenable. Rain says people always have good things to say about him. No, they don't. There <laughs> are plenty of people who have good things to say about Nasser. And uh, some of what they have to say is very valid. But despite that, um, yeah, Nasser is, is overall a, a trustworthy person to, to, uh, to work with. So, and that to me, is, that's, that's the most important thing. Can I, can I trust you? Are you going to live up to your obligations? And, uh, you know. Are you someone who I who you know who I can work with, and uh, you know it won't it won't be too much of a headache. And working with Nasser is a headache sometimes, but you know, like I said, overall he's he's a, he's a good guy. So. I will say that he's probably the most prolific person in Comicscape in terms of putting out books. I, I can't think of anyone else in Comicscape who's, who's put out as many books as he has, as consistently. So that is definitely a plus in Nasser's favor. He is one of the comic book kings that, uh, <laughs> that Ethan likes to mention so many times. He is the heart of CG. That is true. Nasser is the heart of CG. Without Nasser, CG would fall like a deck of cards. He is the linchpin that holds CG together. He is the cornerstone of CG. And he's gracious enough to allow Ethan to take, you know, the bulk of the credit, but in truth, CG is really just completely due to Nasser. He's just nice enough to let Ethan have all the glory. <laughs> if Ethan is Caesar, Nasser is Plato. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Actually, if 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 uh, Ethan is Caesar, then Nasser is Jupiter, king of the gods. He is the uh, he is the one to whom Caesar pays tribute. <laughs> I 
That's why Ethan doesn't have Nasser on his channel that often because he's afraid Nasser is just going to take up all the uh, all the attention, get all the super chats. So, uh, yeah, he doesn't want. Uh, yeah, he needs. He can't have Nasser like taking up all the attention. So he, you know, every once in a while he'll mention Nasser, but he tries not to too much because otherwise that'll immediately just uh, you know draw attention away from uh, from what he has to say. So he has to. He has to dole out mentions of Nasser in, in little bits. Brain says that is true. It is. Ethan knows the magnetic power of uh, Nasser, his uh, irres irresistible charisma. So, you know, Ethan wisely keeps Nasser on a short leash. I mean, he doesn't. Ethan doesn't, doesn't want to lose all of his uh, all of his subscribers to Nasser, so he has to. Be very careful about how how much exposure he gives Nasser, because once the larger YouTube community finds out, uh, you know, just who Nasser is, there goes Ethan's channel. You know, they're all just migrate over to Nasser's, and uh, you know, Nasser's young. You know, he ha he has time to build up his his audience. He has, you know, Ethan doesn't need to, uh, you know, just hand over his own audience to Nasser wholesale like that. You know, let people find out about Nasser on their own, and then, you know be much better for, for everybody involved. Worst part about wearing glasses, you always have to readjust to make sure that you're seeing properly.
Hmm. Comics Legends here. How you doing? He says, uh, hi, Jason. What are your plans for this year? We're, we're already coming up at the end of January. Are you still working on freelance advertising artwork? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So, that's, those are my plans for this year to get more advertising work and magazine illustration work and, and the like. sure if you're open to feedback but if you are the only thing I know is that Johnny Lawrence's eye looks to be looks to be looking way off to the left because it is looking way off to the left <laughs> so and it's not finished yet so once it's once it's done then uh, then it'll probably look much better much like Martin Cove's uh, John Crease here. I've had to erase him about a thousand times tonight. Because <laughs> when I'm drawing, I usually draw, step back, see all my, all my mistakes, correct them, step back, see all my mistakes, correct them, step back, and so on and so forth. It's an endless endless chain of correcting errors when I draw so if you see mistakes that's no that's no surprise I will hopefully correct them by the time I'm finished why is my phone keep on shutting off um Conversation said John Crease looks great. Uh, yeah, it it does until I again until I step back and look at it again. Then I'm like, ah oh, man, I messed it up and I have to 
and I start erasing. At this point, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna go forward with it because I can't I can't spend forever working on it. I just need to I just need to do it. Um, Ray says this guy's open to many things. Eh, to to a point. <laughs> I'm open to criticism because because I, I, I I'm well aware that I make a lot of mistakes. So if you guys see something, you know, feel free to point it out. That's fine. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm like, why does that look weird? Conversation says, yeah, I'm the same way. Changing things until the deadline is up. It's always good to get a fresh eye either by another person or in the morning. Yeah, I I just I I, I just need to learn to, for me the problem is learning when to stop because I I just I'm constantly seeing stuff wrong with my drawings. So I I, I kinda have to like at a certain point, I need to just let it go and just say, you know, it's, like he's, you know, it's not, it's not the Mona Lisa. <laughs> I need to, <laughs> this ain't no piano. I need to just, uh, you know, do the best I can and then try to improve the next drawing, you know, at, at a certain point. So. Thank you. 
Jeff Potts says, um, drawn quarter is over. Chef Kevin Sharp won. Cool. What were you guys, what were you drawing today? Um, was it Animaniacs? I got an alert, but I didn't, obviously I wasn't there, so. <laughs> Kevin Sharp is a pretty awesome artist, so I'm not surprised he won. Five people are here. Hey, Comics Bear, how you doing? He says, Raid. Vic says, this is a nice dude. That's Leo Messi on the left. Who's Leo Messi? I'm not familiar with him. I don't know who Leo Messi is. But when it's done, it, 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 hopefully it, it'll, it'll look more like Johnny Lawrence. <laughs> it might be Leo Messi now, but I'll keep working on it. probably tell why I never win drawn and quartered because it's been two hours actually two and a half hours and this is all I've gotten done <laughs> where's Dragon Guard Kevin's comic I think he's still working on it I imagine so I'm wondering, I, I, what I want is, I want Lone Star 3, and I want Lone Star 3, I want Monster Hunt 2, and I want that Nexus uh, comic that Kelsey drew, um, all of which are written, drawn and inked, and they're just waiting for color, and, you know, I, 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 I want Mike to... <laughs> get them out even if he just sends like black and white pdfs to everybody you know i just, I just want to read the comic I mean, and then you know if he, if he needs to take you know then he can take time to you know get a colorist to color, color them but i mean the books are basically done and i want to read them man See what's going on here. Why does this look odd? Why does this look odd? Thank you. 
have Kelsey call her Lone Star. I think Kelsey's probably busy with his own book. Um, I mean, it'd be great if he did call her Lone Star, but you know, he's only got so much time. He's drawing and inking and coloring. Uh, what is it called, Nora Saga? Or I mean, it, well, he's just that's ongoing. I think it's an ongoing book with uh, uh, the Bright Wiser's company. So. And they have the issue of, you know, having to pay him. You know, I, I don't know if, if Mike, you know, maybe Mike can afford Kelsey. I don't know. He's got all that all that NFT money. So maybe he can't afford him. <laughs> Is Dragon Guard next to Detective Dead? Oh, that's cold. Oh, man. No. Dragon, Dragon Guard will come out. And so will uh, uh, Elliot's book. Um uh, man, uh, um, Doom Kicker. I keep wanting to call it Door Kicker, but <laughs> Doom Kicker. That's coming out too. It's just taking time. But Mike's book is done. Mike's books are done. They're drawn. They're drawn and they're and they're inked. So I'm more uh, I'm more fidgety about that than uh, than Elliot's and uh, and Kevin's. Detective Dead asked Rain. Yeah, Detective Dead was a comic book uh, that was uh, drawn and written by um, what was his name? Can't remember his name. Who did, who did Detective Dead? Anyway, he was promoting it and stuff, and he raised I don't know how much money did he raise like forty thousand dollars or something, and uh, he never got the book out. A uh, you know he uh, he spent the money on stuff and then claim that he didn't have enough money to finish it or whatever. It's like you had you got forty thousand dollars, you know? That's more than enough money to print it and mail it. You just have to sit down and do the work to draw it, you know? And uh there's a little bit of a little bit of a fiasco. <laughs> Fortunately I didn't buy it. But for the people who did buy it, they were pretty ticked off. So, I haven't been I haven't been screwed over yet by uh, by any of the books I've backed. Fortunately, I don't you know. So I'm um, I'm I'm hoping that streak lasts. Um, I mean, the only book I paid for that I didn't get was um, Agenda, and that's only because the you know the author died. <laughs> so I don't I don't I don't really blame him. You know, it's hard to get a book when when the creator dies. But uh, other than that, I've gotten every book that I I ordered. Even even if, even if I had to uh, track down and harass some of the creators, um, you know, a couple of times, I've gotten them, so I'm happy. Hey, Junkyard Dunn's here. How you doing, Junkyard Dunn? Good seeing you. Um, he says, I hope it gets finished. Oh, ludicrous! ludicrous. <laughs> oh, um, wait. Vic says I got my Lone Star three already. No, you didn't. I, I'm not. I'm not trusting Vic. Um, this guy looks like Professor Fonsworth. I don't know who that is. Um, Critias, Mike's protege. Oh, Critias, that was his name. Why is this stupid phone? Stop acting up. Um. Comics Bear, oh, Comics Bear is cruel. He says, Critias, that two-time hustler. Dang. Junk Eric Dunn says, I hope it gets finished someday. The PDF preview he sent out was a good start. Uh, for uh, for um, Detective Dead, is that what you're talking about, Junk Eric Dunn? Comics Legend says, uh, what makes me upset is seeing artists that have extremely late comic campaigns working on a commission art or random art drawings. Yeah, that bothers me too. Like, um, what's his name for um, the the werewolf ninja one? Was this Shinobi Sasquatch? 
yeah I, I see i keep seeing him doing drawings on twitter and stuff and i'm like wh why aren't you working on your book i want that book junkyard does this i still need my low star too you haven't gotten that yet why, why don't you ask mike tell mike that you haven't gotten it and i'm sure he'll mail, mail you out a new one if you haven't got it yet um junkyard I would I wouldn't wait on on stuff like that because I mean I, I like I said a few times I've had to like kind of track down some of these creators and and give them a little nudge saying I haven't got my book and then they've sent it right out so Mike probably just forgot or whatever but you need to let them know or else you'll never get it Rob Willis yeah Rob Willis I mean I I, I love his work I love his I mean I'm, I mean I I don't bother him about it but I, it does annoy me to see Rob Willis putting out awesome drawings on Twitter or whatever while his book's still done, not finished, you know? Finish your book. Put all that energy and time that you're putting into doing little pinups or big pinups or commissions or whatever. Put that energy into finishing your book so that your book can be delivered to the people who paid a lot of money for it um Rob Willis was supposed to do a mail-in book but he didn't do that either well you know if I, that's fine because he didn't finish the first book he was supposed to work on so I don't want him working on any other books until <laughs> until he gets that one done you know um, you know, unless he's someone like, you know, you have someone like, uh, Matthew Weldon who can work on like five books at once and get them all done on time, you know, then, then cool. Then, then do another book. But Rob Willis obviously can't even get one book done in a, in a reasonable amount of time. So he should not be working on any other book. I'm going to see if Mike has an eBay store. I don't think he does, but, uh. Jackie Arden says, um, I sent Mike a message or two, and he didn't respond. I don't know. I mean, but, you know, I, I keep bugging him. <laughs> he's got 20 kids. I'm sure I'm sure he's got a lot on his plate. So so don't stop bugging him, but, you know, don't uh, don't be mean. But, you know, just keep reminding him until, until you become so annoying that he sends you a book just to get you off his, off his back. Junkyard does says agree. Finish your obligations first. Yeah, yeah. Comment solution says exactly. I don't get it. Not professional at all. Yeah. How cool would this guy look with Vegeta hair? He looked very cool with Vegeta hair. I think they tried their best on the show, um, but he needs to grow it out more. So, and then they can just like sort of give him that that blonde like that blonde uh, what's his name. Sonic the Hedgehog look. <laughs> I don't back guys who look crap, so I don't have the problem of Detective Dead. I thought it looked good, but I just it just wasn't my type of book. It, it just you know it wasn't something I, I was interested in. So it had nothing to do with the actual drawing in it. Just didn't just wasn't my type of stuff. Mike pretended he didn't know who he was. He didn't know who who was, who uh, Critias was. Yeah, it's hard to tell when, when Vic is joking or not. <laughs> I can't.
Mike told Junkyard Dunk he doesn't know him. Huh? Uh, again, I don't know if you're joking or not. Um, because <laughs> he he obviously knows who Junkyard Dunn is. Um, Vic says Critus is a hard to see. <laughs> oh no! Oh, stop. Vic says, do a Tommy Lee Jones portrait next. That's what's up. What's he size Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones? What's he size would be cool. I should I should do him. I should do his to do him as Blade. That's a good person. I need to write that down. Thanks, Vic. Um Comic Selection said I haven't backed any comics in a long time. Neither have I. I'm trying to think of the last book I backed, and it's been a long time. Um shoot. I would have to check. It was probably it was probably almost a year ago, and it was probably that Kelsey, um, that Kelsey Shannon um, Nexus book that that Mike's uh, selling. Uh, he says, "Comic Selection says I lost hope. I will only back comic campaigns that have a collection of comics that are already done. An example: I will wait to buy Graveyard Shift one through six in one." Yeah, I just I just don't like. I like buying first editions. I don't like collected stuff. I mean, I, I do, but for for things like comic skate and, and, and related books, I mean, I, I want the first edition. I don't I don't want to buy the trade paper back after they've already been printed. That's that's why I was so mad with uh, um, Red Rooster because when we eventually got the book, it was nothing. It was it was nothing more than a reprint of the Walmart books. It wasn't a first edition. Which is what I paid for, and, and it was just it was, it was a little crap. So I'm still mad about it. So that, and that's why I won't back. Unfortunately, I won't back uh, Kelsey's uh, what's uh, what was a uh, Nora Saga book because it, you know that, that that money's going straight into uh, Mitch Breitweiser's pocket. Pocket. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna put it, another dime into Mitch's hand. Um. Comic Slash said I'm not backing single issues anymore. Okay, that's fair. Um I I, I love single issue comic books. I, I, I buy I buy trade paperbacks when um usually when I miss out on the on the originals and it's too expensive for me to buy the originals, then I'll buy the trade paperbacks because you know it's it's much cheaper. You can get like, you know, four to five, six ish issues, you know, for you know, a fraction of the price that the individual comics cost when they first came out. So it's just a lot, a lot better. Um, comics Bear says, Nat, Crit, Crit was a hustler who rode in on CG. We should have known better. I mean, how, how would you, how would you know? I mean, most of these, most of these guys were complete unknowns until, until a uh, comic skate. I mean, outside of, you know, Ethan and Mike Miller and, and Mitch, and uh, you know some of the, some of the other ones early on, that you know I didn't know any of these people from Adam, you know. But the but their books look good, like Nasser, you know. I no one knew who Nasser was, but you know his book looked good, so I, you know, I, I backed it. And I got my money. Same with Tim Lim. I had no idea who Tim Lim was, um, but his books were fantastic. And they, I mean, he he puts out books like four or five, six a year, I think. I mean, that guy, it, people should follow Tim Lim's uh, formula for, for putting out comic books. He and uh, Mark Pellegrini, those guys are fantastic with uh, iconic comics. Um, who else? What's his name was really good. But I didn't know who he was until Comics Gate. Um, Duck to Naple. But his books were fantastic. Um, you know, so I, I just kind of, I just kind of played it by ear and just looked at, you know, the book, sort of, you know, just sort of listened to them on live streams and decided, you know, is this person, can I, is this person trustworthy, and to do his book, 
do their books look good enough for me to spend 25 bucks on? And it's kind of like, that's a lot of money. Um, so, and, and again, fortunately, you know, I, I haven't been screwed over yet, but, you know, but still, I stopped buying these books in large part because of a lot of the stuff like Critias and, uh, and some of these other people who, who either didn't deliver or have taken years to, uh, you know, to get their books out. So. Brain says, if you back Vestry 4, they always deliver. <laughs> no, I, I have not backed any of the Vestries. I probably should because um, um, Shabby is getting a lot better. It, it, I mean, he's, he's always been decent with his art, but his art is getting better. I probably shouldn't back it. I just haven't done it. Um, Comic Session says, I agree about first, first editions. Brain says, Tim is the best. Yeah, he's cool. He's a cool guy. Um, one Doom Rabbit says, Hey, One Doom Rabbit's back. Yay. Um, he says, That Crease is a great guy. Uh, would have been here early, was on DNQ. Cool. I'm surprised you didn't you didn't kick you didn't win. Because usually one Doom Rabbit kicks butt. But but I heard that Kevin Sharp won, so you, there's no there's no shame in that. <laughs> Kevin Sharp is a pretty pretty fantastic artist. It's too many campaigns also. Yeah. I'd back your books though, Jim Nicky twenty five. <laughs> yeah, if I if I had a comic book worth uh, you know, I, I I would need to come up with a good idea. So let's see. Doom Rabbit says Kevin wins all the time. <laughs> he doesn't win all the time. Um, just some of the time. Most of the time, maybe. Um, actually, when when was um, was was Siege there tonight? Because Siege always wins. So if Kevin won, that, that that's only because Siege probably wasn't there. Why don't you get with Smeg Peg? I heard he wanted to do a story. I don't know who that is. And and again with me working on a comic book with someone it's it's like i you know i'd have to know know who they were and trust them and all that stuff i i don't know who snake peg is um going through rabbit says i'm almost done with my crease i started last night thankfully i chose a different reference <laughs> yeah that, luckily for me because i'm sure yours will look better so um Let's see, Comic Selection said one thing that bothered me about Nor Saga was that issues one through three were released at Walmart. Yeah, that, that, again, that all that stuff, that Walmart stuff, just ticked me off. Um, then they started the campaign. So now loyal Walmart backers waiting for issues four through six will have to wait. Well, that's fine. I don't mind that. Um, but uh, I mean, just I don't know. Just, are there loyal Walmart backers of Nor Saga? I'm sure there are, but eh. Reverse Red Rooster. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Nostra could ask him. 
Nora Saga looks soy. I have the first issue of Nora, Nora Saga. Um, I it looked it, it was okay, but it, it didn't really get my interest that much. The only book that I was really that really interested me, I got I got all first issues for uh, um, the uh, my brain. Allegiance Art. Allegiance Art had like a um, they, they they had a crowdfunding thing for all their first issues of all their books um, a couple years ago, and I and I bought that. So I had the first issues of each of them. The only one that really got my interest was um, Bass Reeves, the, the the one drawn by David Williams, uh, Brohawk, uh, about the uh, the black U.S. marshal back in the 1800s. He it, it, it was an actual person, true story um, type comic. That one was really good. I mean, I, I love that. And, and I felt bad because of my, uh, my sort of... Uh, my Mitch Breitweiser uh, boycott, <laughs> self-imposed, um, because I would have loved to read the other issues of that book. It was well written, the art was fantastic, and it's just very engaging. It's well done. Um, and I think it was written by David, uh, uh, not David, but Kevin uh, Graveau. Is that how you pronounce his last name? He's, he's the guy who the um, the guy who created uh, the Underworld movies he, he wrote them he, he's he's a he's a big black werewolf in uh in underworld and uh but he, he, he he's the one who also wrote he wrote the movie he created those characters so um i think he wrote he wrote bass reeves and it was drawn by um david williams fantastic book so Sorry. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I think I think we, we grabbed we grabbed it at the same time, so um, we sort of cancel each other out. Here's another one. Jekyll Dunn says, see, she was kind of there. <laughs> How was she kind of there? What happened? I actually contacted Mitch about my rooster book the other day. It didn't come, so they're sending it again to me. Nah. Ugh. Ugh. Mitch. Ugh. Ugh. I, I'm going to stop. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, 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 I start... I start ranting when I start thinking about Mitch's stuff. So, um, comments I said I got the first issues as well. Yeah, uh, Junkyard Dunn says I got Legion's is the Saints book recently. Looks good, but I need to actually make time to read it all. Yeah, it's just that um, I didn't um, with the other books, not not the Saints, but the other books like uh, uh, Nora Saga and um. What was the other one? The one with like the Aladdin character. It had like characters from different time periods. I can't remember the name of it. Um, with with those two books, you know, I got them and I opened them up and started reading them. They're, the problem for me is they're so dang verbose. They're so wordy. It was just like I got through the first three pages and I kind of gave up because it was just it was just a headache. I, I don't want that much text when I read a comic book. I, I don't want something like Nos, like when Nasa writes. There's like no text in it, and I hate that as well. I, I want somewhere. I want a happy medium between like Nasa's writing, where there's, there's like almost no dialogue, and something like, you know, um, those two books from Alicia's Arts, where it's just like super wordy. Um, you know, it was almost like reading um, Kev, uh, what's his name, Chris Claremont's X Men, back in the day, where he would just he would just drone on and on. It's like, dude, just I don't want to read all this crap. It, it was it was this rambling, you know, dialogue 
that didn't help move the story. It was just like Chris Claremont, just like in love with his own voice as a writer. And, and I was reading, when I read those two issues, uh, the first issues of Nora Saga and that other book, whatever, whatever it's called, um, it was just, my eyes were rolling back in my head because I, I want, I just wanted the story instead I was getting like a, a novel, you know, with pictures and that's fine. You know, if I know I'm getting a novel with pictures, but I, I, I you know, I just want to read a comic book, you know, a comic book shouldn't take me more than 20 minutes to read. <laughs> okay. So the futurist, thank you. Comments fair. Yeah. Uh, Jack R. does says, don't blame you. Um, it was probably in regards to, um, the Mitch and stuff. Um, I did. I did like the art. I mean, for the futurist, with I think it was done by Butch uh, Gaiman. No, Butch. What's his name? Butch. Um, um, he has another name. Um, Butch. Um, uh, let me try to write it out. Butch. Yeah, well-known Marvel artist. Can't remember his last name. Geis. Is that it? Yeah, Butch Geis. He has another name. He uses another, another name besides Butch, so. Uh, Comic Selection said the futures was okay. I don't like the super sketchy style passed off as final art. It's so much similar to the Red Rooster style. I, I think it was better than Red Rooster. Red, I'm going to get back on Red Rooster. Red Rooster, another thing that ticked me off about Red Rooster was the art took a major nosedive in the second issue um, because Mitch hadn't been working on it and then he tried rushing it and it just ended up looking like garbage in half the book. That annoyed the heck out of me. And, but the Futurist was better than, uh, and more consistent than uh, Red Rooster. So. They look like layout drawings passed off as final pages. Just look rush. Oh, wow. Okay. Red Rooster was worse. Let me get back to drawing, since you guys are here to see me draw and not hear me complain about crowdfunded comic books. Or maybe you are here to hear that. <laughs> well, I thank everybody for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel if you would. Hit the like button if you please. And please hit the bell for notifications of future videos. I will be doing more of these uh, drawing live streams in the coming days and weeks and months. Um, Friday, I hope to be doing Mr. Miyagi. So this is a uh, this is a Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai week. What time is it? Oh, it's 1:14. Shoot. Okay, I'll draw for a little while longer. Then I, I, I'm gonna, I need to get going. It's uh, getting late. But I will be drawing for, eh, I'll draw for another till two, for another 45 minutes. So I'll make it a, a good even four-hour stream. See how much I can get done in that time. Hmm. 
Ah, dang. Ouch. <laughs> Ray says, will you also be drawing Jaden Smith? I will not be drawing Jaden Smith. That is not the Karate Kid. One, because it's not the Karate Kid. And two, because it's in China, and he's learning Kung Fu, not Karate. Terrible name for that movie. One Doom Rabbit says, if, we have, if you have time, we're doing Lord of the Rings tomorrow on DNQFE. Um, okay, thanks. I'm not sure if I'll have time or not, but thanks for the heads up. I appreciate it. Comic Selection says, one comic series I have enjoyed was, yeah, yeah, Gary Shipman's Titan Mouse of Might. I did. I liked that a lot. I wish he continued with part three of his series. It looked like he got sidetracked and tried to chase the NFT wave. Yeah, I don't know if, if he's uh, still... Um, if he's still doing NFTs or if he's trying to do both or not, I don't know. That's just like a whole nother thing that just requires a lot of time and uh, a lot of time and effort to do well in. Guy from Red Bank, how you doing? Just seeing you. Gary is doing both. Cool. Ray says he's my favorite karate kid. You need to, who? Jaden Smith? You need to get better heroes. Um, although all the karate kids kind of stink. I mean, in terms of karate. Um, my favorite karate kid is Johnny. He he is the real karate kid. I'm not I'm not I'm not as big of a fan of of Ralph Macchio and um, what was her name? Um, ah, who, who played the? Who was in Karate Kid Four? The um, famous actress. She was in Million Dollar Baby and you know a whole bunch of other girl. Yeah, boys don't cry. Can't remember her name. Swin, Swinton? It's not Tilda Swinton. It's um. Oh my gosh, Hillary Swank. Boy, Hillary Swank. I like Jaden Smith. He's a really good actor. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. And that version of Karate Kid was awesome. It was it was awesome because of um, Jackie Chan, not because of Jaden Smith. Um, Gary is doing other things. Gary Gary is a he's an art machine. So it makes you feel more sorry because it's happening to tiny creatures. I don't know what you. Rick's talking about something or not. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, I honestly think using tiny vulnerable animals is kind of low-hanging fruit. What's he talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, Vic. <laughs> um, I hope he appears in the next season of, of Cobra Kai. Oh, you're talking about Jaden Smith? <laughs> I don't know how he can, because, they, they again, it's karate and... Jaden Smith was only in Kung Fu, so they don't, I don't know how he'd be in there. Um, I, I hope that Hillary Swank ends up in the next um, season of Karate Kid. I think that would be awesome. They definitely need, they need her to be the villain of, uh, of uh, season five, and then everyone like teams up, teams up against her. That would be hilarious. I would love that. Imagine Jaden appearing and beating up Ralph and saying, "I'm the real Karate Kid." That would be uh, that would be funny. It, it will be the best season. No, the best season will be when Hillary Swank shows up, kicks Jaden Smith's butt, and then no, 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 no. What would be cool is that if if Hillary Swank shows up as the new evil sensei and Jaden Smith is her star pupil, and then they team up. To uh, to crush Cobra Kai with uh, you know led by uh, led by uh, Kreese, Johnny and uh, 
you know, Silver, Terry Silver, and Ralph Macchio. All four of those guys team up to take on uh, Jaden Smith and uh, Hillary Swank. That will be the best season of Cobra Kai ever. Ever. Thomas Legend says, I miss Jackie Chan. Yeah, me too, but his body is shot. I mean, it, I mean, I want to see him in last. Um, one movie I really liked of his that, that was, uh, I, I guess it was like five years ago. It was a movie starring him and Pierce Brosnan. I think it was called The, um, what was it called? The Immigrant or the, uh, something like that. The, um. Can't remember. Anyway, he, play, he plays a, ch a Chinese um, Chinese man whose uh, whose daughter is killed in an in IRA bombing. Uh, a, um, oh, uh, Irish. Uh, uh, what's IRA stand for? Irish rebel rebel army. I can't. What's, what's IRA stand for? I can't remember. <laughs> um, anyway, she dies in one of those bombings. And uh, Pierce Brosnan is the former head of their militant wing. I think he's he, he's he's sort of reformed, and now he's like he's like a politician now. And uh, and Jackie Chan like goes on the hunt. He's he's a he's a former Chinese agent, and he goes on the hunt for his daughter's killers. And so he and uh, he and Br he and Bronson are butting heads and uh, and stuff. So it's a really good movie. Uh, very well done. Um, uh, says, I hope that really happens. I guess Hillary Swank and, uh, Jane Smith, you're a genius. Yes, I know. Um, if you're doing NFTs, would it be a twist? You, you lower the page, this actor is sitting in front of you to do the portrait. The guy from Pretty Woman. Your ideas are better than nauseous this rain. You should have wrote Secret Comics Presents. Yeah, well, I tried to help Nasser, but he uh, he had his own ideas, so <laughs> he wanted to do certain things, um, and uh, you know it's his book, so. Mix says, "Oh, I was thinking Richard Gere in the movie The Jackal with Bruce Willis had to do with IRA too. It did." I don't think, did I see that? I think I may have seen scenes from it. And, and actually, it the, the Jackal was a was a remake. I, I um, did I see the original? 
I may have seen the original from the 70s, and that was a really good movie. Was it called The Jackal? I think it was called something else. I think it was called um, Seven Days of the Jackal, maybe, the original. I can't remember. And I think it was based on a book. Next is uh, do Bruce Wells from the Jackal with his cool little circle glasses. <laughs> Wonder Rabbit, you have a good night. Take care. Sleep well. Thanks for showing up again. It's great seeing you.
a means of transmitting power, a dial to record the flow of power, and a way to control power.
Hmm. Okay, let me step back and take a look for a second. Uh, looks pretty good. Oops. But. Looks pretty good. Let me see. not terrible. I'm actually somewhat happy with it. That's good. That's good. Rain says looks better than a real thing. <laughs> yeah, not quite, but thanks. Just need to keep on, keep on plugging away at it. Um, right now, what I have to do is put that there, put this here so I can find it. Now. Thank you. 
the hitch jet. Bring your horse and head it for Pine Creek. Yes, they're going through the dam. Hurry up and I'll meet your friends. <laughs> Beck says, oh, this looks really good. Oh, thanks. Trying to, trying not to screw it up, but, you know, with me, there's never a guarantee. <laughs> there's always a 50-50 chance that I will screw it completely up, so I'm trying my best to, uh, to keep, it, keep it looking good. from Brett Beck says, you got this in the bag. Never underestimate my ability to screw up a drawing. <laughs> but yeah, this is, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good, so... I still have to finish my drawing for uh, for Friday though, so I gotta I gotta work on that tomorrow. Or actually, probably tonight, because I am getting behind with these drawings. I'm like getting half of them done, and then I spend the next day, you know, trying to squeeze in time to work on it. And, get it finished so I gotta I gotta work faster I got to work faster
Um, Dr. Redbank says, I'm just drawing fan art of Arachna. What is Arachna? I assume it has something to do with spiders. <laughs> is that like a Spider-Man type uh, female Spider-Man or something? Yeah, she's a female Spider-Man parody. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now, unfortunately, this is the final StreamYard stream for this month because I've used up all of my free time. Uh, I had like 30 minutes left and I've used that tonight and extended that to four hours to make as, as much use of, uh, of my StreamYard hours as I could. But after this, I'm gonna have to use, what's it called, o, o, OBS? So uh, hopefully I'll be able to figure it out again. I haven't used it in a while, but just fair warning that my next stream will be a little different and will, will require a lot more hands-on stuff from me. <laughs> um, guy from Red Bank says she's like Peter Parker in Venom when she wears a suit. Oh, cool. Jeff Potts says, we appreciate that, Jason. Oh, <laughs> you appreciate my fair warning. Yeah. Why does this stream stink so much? Oh, yeah. Jason let us know last time that he used up all the stream yard hours. Yes, yes, I did. I should I'm still kicking myself because StreamYard offered, um, offered a, a discount of like $10 a month. You know, you can get, get, you can get the, their, uh, their service for $10 a month. Back, I think it was on. When was it? it? Was on Black Friday? I think it was on Black Friday, and I didn't do it because I didn't think I'd be streaming that much, and now I'm like streaming a lot more <laughs> than I was, and uh, I'm like, dang it. So should have jumped on it when the iron was hot. I'm hoping that they'll they'll repeat the offer next year, and then next year I'll be able to. Take advantage of it. Or even better, if they repeat the offer sometime this year. Wait. Yeah, it would be this year, but sometime earlier in the year. Boy. Brain. Ooh. Let's see. Oops, I don't need that.
Okay, I think I'm done for now. Uh, it's 2 o'clock. There are two people left, two people who have managed to survive the gauntlet of watching me draw. And uh, I want to appreciate, well, express my appreciation to everybody who uh, spent time watching today. Uh, this is a uh, drawing of John Kreese from Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. It's not done yet. I will finish it, and then I will post it on the social medias next week along with the other uh, Karate Kid drawings. Uh, go down below if you haven't already, and uh, follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, the like, Instagram. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. Again, like all these little drawings I'm doing, uh, the finished art will be for sale for 60 bucks. So if you want it, let me know, and uh, just... Uh, you know, follow the instructions in the description again below, and uh, I'll mail it off to you. Okay. Uh, trying to think what else. Um, I think that's it. My comic book is still available for sale. Uh, Secret Comics presents an anthology of horror stories, four horror stories, one comic book, and uh, click the link again below, and uh, you can buy it directly. And uh, I will mail that out to you. Okay. Right, I will see you guys later. Um, Vimri is still here. How you doing, Vimri? Good seeing you. We got another last minute Russian bot, and I hope he subscribes before I hide him from the channel. So, uh, everybody, everybody else, hope you have subscribed as well. Hope you have hit the like button. I hope you have hit the bell for notifications of future videos because I'll be back. And uh, I will see you next time. Okay, you guys have a great night, and thanks again for watching. I appreciate it a lot. Okay, take care. Talk to you later.